Hello, hello, Mordimers here and today I would like to show you uh, another game from the Magnus Carlsen Invitational 2020 and Magnus Carlsen Invitational Tournament is the tournament played online on the platform chess24.com and uh, is you know the bestest of the best uh, in the chess history uh, we have two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars the prices all the prices and the first prize is seventy thousand dollars so uh, that's quite awesome and Magnus uh, invited eight top players uh, for a rapid chess tournament and we can enjoy that so um, each match consists between the players consists four games uh, 15 minutes plus 10 seconds incrementation and so these are rapid games and we have a round robin between eight players okay so everybody plays with everybody and if the player win then get the three points if there is a draw the players play armageddon game uh, white have five minutes black has four minutes and white has to win to win the match and in this case uh, the winner gets uh, one, two points and the loser gets one point and draws are not allowed before move 40 so these are the rules and today uh, one of our subscribers wanted to see the game of Alireza Firuzia so uh, I'm gonna show you the game where Alireza Firuzia play against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen world champion, uh, the highest ranked player in the history and uh, for now his actual ranking is 2863 but in rapid chess 2881. He is 29 years old, very experienced player, very strong, extremely strong player and his opponent Alireza Firuzia 16 years old prodigy from Iran however he doesn't play uh, for Iran now uh, due to some political circumstances uh, and he play under Fide flag uh, he live in France at this moment and he's ranking 2728 uh, in standard time format and uh, in rapid section 2703 points so uh, definitely not as strong as Magnus but he was invited uh, because chess community around the world want to see him among the best and Ali Reza Firuzia doing uh, really really great in this match against Magnus Carlsen he lose uh, two and a half to one and a half but I would like to show you the game number two between these two guys and it's very interesting game and also it's very interesting ending so without further ado let's jump into the game so uh, Alireza Firuzia open with e4 we have c5 Sicilian defense knight f3 knight c6 and now bishop b5 and Magnus Carlsen said that he just wanted to crush Alireza Firuzia after losing in the final of Banter Blitz uh, tournament just you know maybe a week earlier and let's see if he can do that Magnus continue with e6 however g6 is also playable even more popular in this position uh, and here bishop takes on c6 b takes on c6 and now d3 by Alireza Firuzia and we have queen on c7 supporting e5 this is the plan of Magnus Carlsen so these two pawns can control d4 so Alireza cannot really easy open the center and you know uh, be in his uh, favorite type of games with you know open position so uh, that's the plan we have queen on e2 by Firuzia and e5 as planned knight b on d2 now knight on e7 and now knight c4 uh, knight on g6 so little bit uh, maneuvering but it's just the beginning we have h4 by Alireza Firuzia so threatening to attack the knight and Magnus Carlsen stop it immediately h5 and he creates some weakness here on g5 uh, which can be maybe exploited 
Uh, for now, the knight can get to the outpost of f4. So uh, Alireza play g3, controlling um, this f4 square. Uh, we have d6 by Magnus Kals and and now we have bishop on d2 developing this bishop as well. Magnus Carlsen play f6, so this pawn now controls uh, g5, so any outpost uh, for Alireza is impossible here. And now we have knight on e3. So uh, remaneuvering the pieces and both sides have quite a lot of time because now they have to find the best squares for all the pieces and the position is quite close so they have time to do that but they still have to be very precise we have bishop on e7 so magnus carlsen moving the bishop with the plan of uh, remaneuvering it to b6 and from here this bishop can be uh, quite strong and Alireza Firuzia also has to do something, for example, with this knight. This knight is pretty poor. It can't go here. It can't go anywhere, actually. All of this is blocked or controlled by the black pieces. So this knight goes first. We have knight on g1, trying to remaneuvering it to uh, another square. We have bishop d8 as planned. Now queen on f3. Uh, and here... Black could play bishop on e6. It would be uh, pretty natural here. Uh, it also supports uh, movement of this pawn. So these pawns uh, can easily be, be pushed. Uh, of course, for now, the, the knight on e3 controls also uh, these squares, but uh, it's very important move. However, uh, Magnus Carlsen has a different plan here. First, knight on f8. So he want to use e6 square uh, for the knight first. Uh, we have knight on e2 as planned and now knight on e6. And here queen on g2 preparing f4. Uh, and now Magnus Carlsen play some distraction move a5. Uh, and Alireza Firuzia should just go for f4. It looks like a natural development move. And after knight on d4, play f5. And then this bishop uh, can't really, you know, get to the to the game on this diagonal can't get to the e6 which is quite important because now uh, g5 is possible so this bishop can't be on f7 i will explain to you in the couple of moves why it's so important but now g4 is the normal plan in the position like that okay so uh this was not played alireza firuzia block uh, this pawn on a5 so he play a4 and now we have knight on d4 as planned and now f4 that's uh, of course the move bishop e6 and now the bishop is already on e6 and that would not be possible if the pawn is already on f5 of course uh, here we have b3 by alireza firuzia and now queen on d7 f5 by uh, Firuzia and now bishop on f7 so now any g4 uh, Magnus Carlsen said in the analysis after the game he don't worry about any g4 which normally would be very very dangerous because he can just take it and then move the bishop on h5 and this bishop would be very uh, very strong here with the knight on d4 and you know controlling f3 that would be extremely dangerous for white so uh, we have knight on c1 now d5 and here as g4 is still impossible so a uh, castle by firuzia he see that uh, you know center is gonna uh, be open so better to keep the king in safety and here is quite funny story because magnus carlsen play uh, c4 and he said after the game that uh, he wanted his intention was to play d takes on e4 and after d takes on e4 play c4 okay uh, that was his first idea however uh, he played c4 first and he got quite angry because his plan believe me or not was like for as follow so b takes on c4 uh, d takes on c4 d takes on c4 and we actually have the same uh, position but what Magnus Carlsen have in mind by playing c4 was actually knight f3 you see the idea 
If you don't see the idea, I don't tell you to, you know, pause the video. Uh, but Magnus Carlsen idea was rook takes on f3 and now he play queen d4, forking the king and forking the rook, okay? You understand the idea? He just missed that the, the knight is still on e3, so that's quite funny. However, here he see already, okay, that's not gonna work. But the position is 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 exactly the same. Uh, but anyway, he lost one pawn. However, it's not so big loss because you know this is the the pawn and these are the double pawns, so not really big deal for now. Uh, we have bishop on b6. So uh, because of this uh, bishop b6, uh, Magnus Carlsen still have you know strong enough position to just hold the game. Uh, that's what he said. We have rook on b1 attacking this bishop, queen on a7 defending and also creating this battery uh, and pin. Okay, so uh, it's pretty dangerous here. So, for example, now we have very simple threat, just uh, knight takes on c2, okay? Uh, winning the pawn and maybe if Alireza plays something wrong, uh, also winning the piece. So this is why Alireza, of course, moved the king to the safety, king on h2, and now rook d8. So uh, developing the rook to the open d file, very important move. Now we have rook on b2, we have castle by Magnus Carlsen, and once Magnus uh, castle, Alireza start to attack, and he play g4. And now look at this, it doesn't look so dangerous yet, uh, but it's extremely dangerous. So, for example, if um, g takes on h5, then this knight actually can jump to g4 and then can take the pawn on f6, also can take, can go to h6 if needed. This is the pin, that's quite dangerous. This bishop also can go to h6 and, you know, uh, the pieces can concentrate on g7. Very unpleasant position for black. So, uh, Magnus Carlsen has to do something about that and he thought, okay, so I'm gonna sacrifice the exchange and he executed it this way, knight on e2, okay? Now this battery works on the attack on e3. So uh, queen on e2, now rook on d2, uh, queen on d2 and now uh, getting this knight. And here uh, Magnus said like uh, queen on e2 played by Ali Reza not really greatest, uh, queen on g2 probably would be better because actually it can control uh, e4, which gonna be attacked, which is weakness in the white position. So uh, he was actually right, but it's not so easy like he just explained because after h takes on g4, uh, if he takes the pawn on g4, then we have bishop f4 with check, king g2, now queen d4, uh, rook is under attack, pawn is under attack, so it's not so clear. Uh, and after knight on d3, queen e4 with check, king h3, now queen c4, uh, rook on g1, uh, threatening the checkmate, bishop h6, queen c4 just exchanging pieces, and that would be the position which is slightly better for white, and uh, Magnus Carlsen was actually right that uh, this would be much safer for Ali Reza. But look what happened after uh, queen on e2. Uh, we have queen on d4 like before attacking the rook and the pawn. So knight on the tree of course defending the rook. Queen on e4 and now rook on e1 solidifying the position here defending the queen so uh, any checks will not come you know with picking up the the queen uh, and now we have bishop on f4 with check uh, and white can't actually take this bishop that would be disaster it looks like a pretty good move but after a uh, knight takes on f4 actually uh, queen takes an f4 king g2 Bishop c4 with tempo on the queen, queen has to be moved, now bishop d5 with tempo and this is extremely strong attack. Uh, now this pawn gonna fall and it's very dangerous here, okay, so uh, that would not be good. So king on h3, this was played by uh, Ali Reza here, we have queen on c4 
and now g takes on h5 as planned and now the road to the king is open so alireza now is in his you know position where he can try you know to play his best chess uh, Magnus Carlsen play bishop on h6, very natural move, blocking uh, advancement of the um, h-pawn and also defending of g7. And this position was estimated by Magnus Carlsen as uh, his pair of bishop is not as active as he thought, okay? So uh, is not as great as a knight and the rook uh, in this position. However, he has very active queen and also the king is in the safety. So uh, overall he's, he's happy with this position. Uh, we have rook on b7, queen on a4, creating the passed pawn. Uh, and now rook on g1 so uh, now uh, alireza is gonna attack on the on the semi open g file we have rook on d8 so magnus carlsen also want to be very active we have rook on g3 uh, bringing the rook in front to, to create this battery which could be very dangerous and now we have queen on a1 so now White have to be uh, very careful because this queen uh, can be very dangerous on h1, maybe on f1 it's up to the position what's gonna happen. And Alireza here has a very, very simple plan. He gonna play knight on f2, uh, knight on g4 and create some threats here you know, with this on this pin. Okay, so that's his plan. However, it seems like queen on g2 would be uh, much more interesting maybe not winning but black would have to be very precise now and play something like queen on a2 which is uh which is okay but this is a very complicated computer line or queen on d4 which is much easier to understand and now rook on g7 bishop g7 h6 and checkmate doesn't work because black can actually play queen on e3 and after king on h2 uh, queen h6 and uh, black is winning here so uh, that would not be possible so then white could play knight on f2 with this plan and after queen on f4 threatening to take uh, f5 white actually would be forced to play uh, queen on f3 and after exchanging the pieces bishop h5 and uh, let's say rook on d3 and the position is uh, according to the engine is is equal but probably is just complicated uh, black has you know two uh, passed pawns however uh, down the exchange not so easy but pair of bishop looks pretty impressive so uh, m both sides you know have to be very precise and uh, have to think what to play so that would be uh, very interesting from Alireza Firuzia however he played knight on f2 and here we have very critical position of this game and Magnus Carlsen say okay what I should play in this position is because Alireza has no threats here, completely no threats. I should just play a4. a4. Rook d3, I just play rook f8 and there is nothing. Okay? This position I can stand. It's just equal. It's nothing here. And he, ca he don't have any threats. Queen on g4, it's actually losing because queen f1 and there is a checkmate. King h2 and bang. This is a checkmate. Look at this. Look at this. This is just a checkmate okay so it's impossible so uh, after this bishop d5 that would be just uh, you know very comfortable position marching with the pawn to the victory maybe uh, also uh, after a4 uh, if white tries something like knight on g4 it looks like obvious threat which doesn't work so Magnus Carlsen estimated it very correctly but it's quite complicated because after bishop on f4 knight f6 king h8 uh, and now what to play uh, if rooks go on g2 then queen c3 would be extremely uh, dangerous and would be winning so uh, probably rook on f7 uh, but still queen h1 and now how would you estimate this position okay g takes on f6 
how would you estimate this position? Think for a while, and it looks like white is doing not so bad, but actually uh, white is losing here because this pawn is extremely dangerous and white have to stop it somehow. This rook is pinned and this rook, if moving here, then black just winning this, this rook, okay? So that's pretty easy and uh, black is winning. And if rook on f6, it also doesn't work. Rook on g8, rook g6, it looks pretty good now, uh, but simply bishop g3, king g3, a3, and how to stop this pawn? It's impossible. Uh, king f3, uh, there is no pin now, but just exchange, h takes on g3, and this pawn is promoting and winning the game. So, uh, as you see, this a4 would be pretty good. This would be a very nice move. For some reason, however, Magnus Carlsen want to be very active and crush Alireza Firuzia, and he play rook on d2, attacking the queen. And he attacked the queen, seriously. And now feel free to pause the video and enjoy winning against Magnus Carlsen in the rapid game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Ready? So what happened in the game, uh, not difficult to spot it, but rook on b8, okay? And this is check and then Black doesn't have much choice if something like, I don't know, bishop on e8, queen c4, and now rook d5 can block, rook e8 winning this uh, bishop, and then simply extra rook is enough to win the game, okay? So uh, it's actually checkmate in seven for, uh, for white, but even without this is extra rook, so of course is winning. So Magnus Carlsen, of course, didn't play that. He played king on h7. The point is he maybe missed this move. Queen g4, look at this move. And then nothing can stop now uh, white from checkmating. Queen g6. This is what is coming, sacrificing the queen and then checkmate in another moves. And uh, black has nothing here. Uh, Magnus said something like he told like, OK, queen on f1 and I have a checkmate here, but there is no checkmate. Rook g2, this was played by Ali Reza and there is nothing more here. So uh, Magnus took the rook. We have king on g2 and he resigned the game because checkmate is coming and he has uh, nothing to do here. So really unexpected ending and uh, wow. Okay, so this game was won by Ali Reza, but Magnus managed to uh, win twice, uh, draw one game. So uh, he won this match and he got three points and Ali Reza got zero points. Uh, however, in this game, uh, he was uh, pretty, pretty sneaky. And Magnus said it's uh, devilishly tricky to play against Ali Reza. He always have some, uh, it's possible to outplay him, but it's always very, very slippery. So have to be very careful. As you see, that's a very good example of Magnus, what Magnus said. So if you like this video, press a like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike and uh, leave the comment. Which games would you like me to uh, cover next time? And thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss any other, uh, press subscribe, smash the bell button and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.